Blood is the liquid that is transported through the circulatory system. But how much blood do you think you have in your body? Well, the human body is supposed to have between four and a half and five and a half litres of blood, which, to be honest, completely freaks me out. I'm not a fan of blood whatsoever, and I feel faint any time I get anywhere near someone who wants to take a sample of blood to do tests on it. Nevertheless, it's absolutely critical for my survival. So blood is vital for a number of reasons, including the fact that it carries gases such as oxygen and carbon dioxide through our circulatory system. It also carries nutrients which are absorbed through the digestive system. It transports hormones and removes waste from the body. Blood also participates in immune system reactions and helps the body to maintain homeostasis. Homeostasis is a constant internal environment. So for example, blood helps to regulate uh, the pH of the fluid in your body. It also regulates cells water content. It does things like absorbs heat and dissipates heat at the body surface so that you end up with a constant internal temperature. So blood is really vital to our survival for all these different reasons. So blood is actually a connective tissue that consists of cells and cell fragments suspended in a liquid called plasma. So the cells that are suspended in this plasma are red blood cells and white blood cells. And the cell fragments that are suspended in the plasma are called platelets. Plasma makes up more than half of the volume of blood. In fact, it makes around about 55%. So 55% of the liquid flowing through your veins is actually plasma. And you, when you break plasma down, the majority of plasma, in fact, around about 92% of it, is water. The remaining 8% contains proteins, which are vital for your immune response. And 1% is salts. Uh, wastes, nutrients, hormones, and dissolved gases. While the concentration of these dissolved molecules are very low, they are absolutely critical for your survival. So, for example, blood usually contains around 0.1% glucose. But if the concentration falls to 0.06%, it can actually cause the body to begin convulsion. The remaining 45% of blood is made up of the cells and cell fragments. And the majority of this, around 95.1%, is actually made of the red blood cells, which give blood its red colour. 4.8% are platelets, and only 0.1% are the white blood cells. Mature red blood cells are referred to as erythrocytes, and these are saucer-shaped discs that carry a pigment called hemoglobin. Hemoglobin is actually a protein that carries oxygen, and the pigment is what gives red blood its colour. This blue shape represents an oxygen-poor hemoglobin molecule, and inside each hemoglobin molecule there are four iron atoms, represented by this yellow shape here. Now, each of those iron atoms is able to bind to a single oxygen atom, coming in through the pulmonary circuit. So you end up with a oxygen-rich hemoglobin molecule bound to four oxygens. Now that haemoglobin molecule then goes through the systematic circuit and releases the haemoglobin for cellular respiration. And in this way, haemoglobin can continue to uh, collect and distribute oxygen throughout the whole body system. And there's around about 250 million haemoglobin molecules in each red blood cell. Most images you see represent oxygen-poor blood as the colour blue and oxygen-rich blood as the colour red. In reality, oxygen-rich blood is actually a bright red colour and oxygen-poor blood is still red, it's just a deeper red colour. 
Red blood cells originate from stem cells in red bone marrow at a rate of around about 2 to 3 million per second. As they fill with haemoglobin, the red blood cells of humans and some other vertebrates lose their nucleus and their ribosomes and mitochondria. And the reason they do this is because it enables them to maximize the space available for haemoglobin making red blood cells more efficient at binding with oxygen. However, this means that they cannot divide or repair damage. Mature red blood cells leave the bone marrow and enter the circulation, and they bounce around and have a pretty hard life. They only last for about 120 days, considering the stresses they go under, bouncing against artery walls and squeezing through tiny capillaries. And eventually the spleen destroys the red blood cells and recycles most of their components. Blood contains five different types of white blood cells. And the white blood cells are also referred to as leukocytes. White blood cells are larger than red blood cells. They're also different in that they actually have a nucleus and they lack haemoglobin. And this means they don't actually carry oxygen. But what white blood cells do do is participate in immune responses. So they're very important for doing things like fighting infection by destroying microbes, but they also secrete molecules that can provoke inflammation in the case of an injury. If the number of white blood cells are too high or too low, it can indicate an illness. So for example, leukemias are cancers in which the bone marrow overproduces white blood cells. So if you have too many white blood cells in your blood, it could be an indication of this type of cancer. But because white blood cells participate in the immune but because white blood cells participate in immune responses, having too fewer white blood cells in your blood can actually leave the body vulnerable to infection. Platelets are small colourless fragments of cells that initiate blood clotting. They travel freely through the circulatory system, so that if the circulatory system is ruptured, say for example in this case uh, the capillaries on this man's face that he's cut when he's shaving, then the platelets start to adhere to one another and form a plug that helps to control that blood loss. After that, the exposure of blood to surrounding tissues activates clotting factors, which traps red blood cells to form a clot, as shown in this electron micrograph image here, and that prevents further blood loss. Blood that clots too slowly can lead to severe blood loss. Haemophilia, for example, is an inherited bleeding disorder caused by absent or abnormal clotting factors. Deficiencies of vitamin C or K can also slow clotting and healing of wounds. In summary, blood has numerous functions including carrying gases, excreting wastes, participating in immune system reactions and helping the body to maintain homeostasis. Blood is a connective tissue which is suspended in a liquid called plasma and blood is made of red blood cells that carry oxygen white blood cells that participate in immune responses and platelets that initiate blood clotting.